You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome to Enter Connected with your host, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Psychiatrist Rainer Gilmore will explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit, and how they have an effect on each other within our internal and external worlds. So welcome the host of Enter Connected, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you are listening to Interconnected. We're on, we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I welcome you to enter on this journey with me as I explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. When you enter this space, you will be connected to a wealth of information. You will also see that we are more similar than we are different, so we should use that to lift each other up as opposed to looking at perceived differences to tear each other down. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. We are in the month of May, so I'm going to go over our monthly observations. It is bike month, get caught reading month, hamburger month, military appreciation month, motorcycle awareness month, egg month, photograph month, salad month, salsa month, strawberry month. It's also uh, women's health month and mental health awareness month. This week was National Teachers Week as well as National Nurses Week. So I'd like to give a shout out to all the teachers out there, whether you're in the classroom or not, um, and give a shout out to all the nurses out there. I'd like to uh, say, give a special shout out to a nurse that uh, we lost on Sunday uh, due to a biking accident, uh, Stephanie Vesper. I had the pleasure of working with her and she was not only a great nurse, but a great person, had a great spirit, a great mother, a great cook, just a great person all around. I'm still kind of messed up over it. Um, You know, tell people that you love them. Uh, live your life to the fullest. You never know when it's going to be your last day or your loved one's last day. So think about that when you're trying, when you're holding on to grudges and, and, you know, holding on to things that may seem trivial in the grand scheme of things. So in the spirit of it being, um, national nurses week, um, I do have a special guest, but I'm going to go over my days for the week. So today's an A, so it was bike to school day, coconut cream pie day, have a Coke day, receptionist day, school nurse day, and third shift workers day. On the 9th is butterscotch brownie day, lost sock memorial day, because we know we have plenty of those. Moscato Day, woot woot, I love me some Moscato, and Sleepover Day. Friday is Clean Up Your Room Day, need to do that. Lipid Day, Military Spouse Appreciation Day, Provider Appreciation Day, and Shrimp Day. Lots of people will be at Red Lobster. Saturday is Archery Day, Babysitter's Day, Birth Mother's Day, Cornelia DeLange Syndrome Awareness Day, Eat What You Want Day. All right, that's every day for me. Foam Rolling Day, Miniature Golf Day, Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive Day, and Twilight Zone Day. Okay, that's a little scary. The 12th is Fibromyalgia Awareness Day, Limerick Day, 
Nutty Fudge Day, Odometer Day, and Mother's Day. I want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. Special shout out to my mom and my sister and my grandmother and my aunts. The 13th is Apple Pie Day, Crouton Day, Frog Jumping Day, Fruit Cocktail Day, Women's Checkup Day. The 14th is Buttermilk Biscuit Day, mm-hmm. Dance Like a Chicken Day, and Underground America Day. And on next Wednesday, the 15th is Chocolate Chip Day, Nylon Stocking Day, because people still wear stockings apparently, and Peace Officers Memorial Day. So make sure you celebrate those days. My special guest this evening, like I said, in the spirit of celebrating nurses for National Nurses Week, is Miss Corinne Roberson, and she is a licensed practical nurse. She became a nurse in 2016. She has primary experience in long-term care. She's been in healthcare since 2012, first as an STNA. She's currently in pediatric psychiatry, so I work with her in one of the clinics that I work in. And she intends to go back and become a nurse practitioner or therapist. And I forgot to introduce myself. Whoa. My name is Dr. Raina Gilmore. I am a board-certified psychiatrist who specializes in child and adolescent psychiatry. I am from Florida and currently practicing in Cincinnati, Ohio. So, Corinne, how are you doing this evening? I am doing great, Dr. G. Thanks for having me on your show. Yes, and thanks for doing it because not everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's this is past her bedtime. I want to say that. So she is making the sacrifice to be on this show. And I, and I, I really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, so thank you. So, can you give us a little background about yourself and kind of what led you to go into nursing? So, I have always been really interested in the way that the body works and kind of like how the mind, body, soul, and spirit actually work together to promote our optimal health. So, I've always been very interested in that. I started out wanting to be a neurosurgeon and that was a lot of school, so I said, yeah, and it is. I can yeah. work bedside. Yeah, I was like, I can work bedside as a nurse and actually get it, get to interact with my patients the way that I would want to. So, okay, okay. And where are you from? I am from Cincinnati, Ohio. Born and bred. Born and bred. Do you have any plans to leave? I don't have any concrete plans to leave, but I am not against moving out of the state or out of the city. Okay. Family-wise, you have any children? What's up? You know, give us more. Give us more. More, more, more. I have a five-year-old son, Ryan. He is the apple of my eye. I love him to death. Really smart kid. You know, he gets that from mom. Of course. between working at the foster care agency and the home care agency and being mom, sometimes I can be pretty spread thin, but I got some good coping skills and some bad coping skills to kind of work through yeah. that. You know, we all have our bad coping skills, and I like that you're aware of it. You know, we're not going to put you out on front street like that to talk about what those bad coping skills are, but um, we, you know, we're not, we're not judgy on this show. We don't judge. You know, we all have our vices and devices that we use. So, um, but it's good that you can balance that with some positive, healthy coping skills. Um, and, you know, I think it's important that we realize that even people that we work with, the population we work with, we're not too much different from them. So at any given point in time, we could be in their situation. So it's best to try and empathize with them and understand their plight as opposed to being judgmental, looking down on them. Um, Cause I think that's a big barrier um, to people getting help. You know, they, they just don't 
feel comfortable. They feel like they're being judged. I know that happens a lot in the healthcare field. And then when you even bring in mental illness, you know, talking about that, it's hard to talk about. And it's not a black, white, yellow, brown thing. I mean, I know there's a lot of distrust in the black community, but it's, you know, we, we all need to speak up and, and let people know that professionals know, not just you can't just tell anybody what's going on with you because they may not be able to handle that and they may take it somewhere you don't want it to go. So, you know, there's people out there who are trained and who are there to, to help you and have your best interest at heart. Um, so utilize those services uh, and try and get the help that you need. Um, but I, I am glad that you did bring up, you know, the fact that you have those coping skills. We all could utilize coping skills. What are coping skills? Can you tell us what coping skills are? So the non-fancy term, the way that I would explain it, is just ways and methods that you use to kind of deal with the everyday stresses and some of the unexpected stresses of life. So Great. kind of like getting out, riding a bike, that type of thing, just the healthier thing versus turning to other methods that can be destructive. Love it. It's time for us to take a break while you all let that marinate in your spirit. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And when we come back, we are going to talk about mental health. We'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. It is National Nurses Week and in the spirit of that, we are talking about the impact of nursing and I have special guest, Nurse Corinne. I'm going to call you Nurse Corinne if that's okay. Um, So... In this segment, I wanted to talk about mental health um, and your experiences uh, since, you know, you you've worked in different arenas um, and now you're working uh, in the clinic with, uh, you know, children and families with uh, mental health needs. Um, But kind of can you talk about your experience uh, as it relates to mental health and nursing? So, like you mentioned Initially, I started out as an STNA, so kind of like a nursing assistant working in long-term care. And what people don't realize is that mental health is just health. It's not, it's something separate, obviously, but it goes to how the body works Mm -hmm. at a good, yeah, like kind of like at a good level, at a good functional level. So... Working in that arena, it was just kind of like learning the different ways to help let people let you help them with the mind. Because it's not just like, oh, well, they're a cardiac patient, so they don't have mental health concerns. Everybody has mental health concerns, for one thing, mm-hmm. and it's in every part of nursing. So it's very important that healthcare workers be aware of those things, those diagnoses, the different symptoms and things that they can do to kind of assist people, especially when they're in crisis. Okay. What are some things that you have learned um, through the different um, arenas of nursing that you've been in? The most important thing that I think I have learned 
is a lot of times people just want to be heard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, a lot of times it's like people, when we're in healthcare, we're busy, we're running, we got 16 plus patients and we're trying to make sure that everybody's satisfied. But just taking that extra couple minutes to say, hey, Mrs. Jones, I like your sweater. How are you doing? And letting mm-hmm. her state her grievance or state her happiness and just kind of say what's going on with them, just knowing that somebody is there to listen and that somebody cares. And if they have a problem, somebody is going to try to assist them with their issues. That's one of the most important things I think that I've learned in healthcare overall. And I think, I think that's why nursing is so vital and so important. Um, I don't think, People give nurses, uh, teachers as well, uh, but definitely I don't think people give nurses a lot of credit, um, and I think they get minimized a lot of times too. But they they're the ones who are in the trenches, you know, doing a lot of the direct care. Because, um, like you said, you know, doctors and and other healthcare professionals are very busy so they're in and out they may not be able to devote the amount of time which i think sucks you know these eight minute visits you know you got somebody scheduled every 15 minutes um that really is not in the interest of the patient it's in the interest of money and in business uh so i think nurses play play a vital role many times i remember when i was working um in the hospital and when you ask, you know, uh, I, I tried to be very present um, and made sure people knew who I was. Uh, but many times, like if I have patients now who have been in the hospital, uh, you know, and I may ask the parent or the patient, oh, do you know who your doctor was over there? They don't even know who the doctor was, but they'll remember the nurses. They'll remember the social workers, you know, the mental health specialists, you know, the people who were spending that you know a lot more of the time with them so um i think you bring up a good point in that we you know we as people we really we're social beings you know um and and we really do want to be heard and you know there's so many times that people are in the hospital and there's not people coming to see them you know um or even if they're in long-term, you know, care facilities or nursing homes, you know, they 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 actually do better, you know, they actually do better when they have that social interaction. I mean, it could be life-saving to be able to, to laugh and have that, you know, that that connection with someone. Um, so it's 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 very very vital role that you guys play and um I definitely appreciate you for that what about um with it since you've been working with the children any any uh things that you any differences you've seen or any things that you've gained from that experience um with the kids the main thing that I find that's different is I'm kind of in that in between. I'm 26, so I'm not, I'm an adult, you know, I'm old enough to know better type of thing, but being young, I can still kind of see where they are mentally because I wasn't there so long ago. It wasn't a long time ago. So I remember everything being a crisis and just kind of being able to relate, but knowing that some of the things that they worry about are not as big a deal as they think. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Um, do you think, I guess, how how is your mental health affected? And you don't, have, you don't have to get too personal, but how do you think your mental health is affected in this line of work? Um. Well, I'm not going to lie and say it's not affected because it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Um, I mentioned to a couple of my colleagues earlier today and this week and just mentioning, I knew that there were kids in foster care, but it was like, I just didn't know. I don't, I didn't know all the things that they go through. Some of the things that you hear them talk about is just totally unbelievable. And to see them still be able to smile even is miraculous to me because they've been through so much and I couldn't imagine being in that position. I know I would be just as 
upset. So sometimes when I come home, especially after we have men's moms and that type of thing, I'm really drained, but I'm also mm-hmm. very grateful for my family. I'm grateful okay. for being able to be there for my family because I know a lot of mothers aren't able to be there for whatever reason. And I, and you know, I can, I can definitely agree with that. While this job, um, it can be very emotionally draining. It's also very rewarding. Um, and many times I have to remind myself of how blessed and how grateful I am. You know, no family is perfect and everybody's got mm-hmm. issues, you know, and, and, and things that they deal with. But when I see what these kids at such young ages have had to go through, you know, it it really... It hurts my heart. Yeah. yeah, it hurts my heart. Uh, it, but like you said, it also makes me appreciate the relationships, you know, I do have within my own family. As crazy as it might be, you know, we still we still find a way to <laughs> stick together. Um, but there's so many disrupted families out there and for whatever reasons and there's a lot of judgy people out there who don't take the time to understand the dynamics that go you know that the underlying dynamics you know they want to be quick to say point the finger and 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 say talk about things they don't really know the full story you know I, I encourage people to really be quiet and listen. Mm-hmm. I don't think we, we do that enough. You know, I don't. I definitely don't think we do that enough. Be quiet and listen. You really could find out a lot. We, we, we're supposed to be experts and we are always saying stuff and, and thinking that we're helping people by giving them all this advice, but I don't think we mm-hmm. are quiet enough and we don't listen enough. So it's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the body and the mind and how those connect. Stay tuned. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Patricia Fayeweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866 
4511451. Again, that is 866 451 This evening, we're talking about the impact of nursing in the spirit of National Nurses Week. And I have special guest, Nurse Corinne. And I have a question from a listener. And that question is, there seems to be a shortage of nurses nationwide. Any thoughts on why? Oh, I have a few thoughts on that. Um, First, I feel like it's very hard to get into nursing now. Every program is very competitive. And although a lot of nursing is common sense, it's like, okay, baby's got a fever. I'm going to take the temperature. I'm going to give him Tylenol. I'm going to watch it break or not, and I might take it to the doctor. But when we get into that biology and chemistry part of it, it becomes a little bit more difficult for people to succeed in those programs. I think that's part of it. A lot of the nurses that we're in are, and a lot of it I think is to do with like LPNs being in nursing homes and then RNs being in hospitals. And it's kind of like nobody wants to be an LPN anymore. Everybody wants to be an RN, but we don't have people working in those arenas. So that can cause an issue. And also it's very expensive and it takes a lot of mm-hmm. commitment time wise. It takes, it, it takes away your ability at, at some point in your nursing career, you're actually working a full nurse's schedule and they're still expecting you to pay your bills as well. Mm-hmm. There are a lot mm-hmm. more requirements. It's not as easy as just, Oh, I'm just going to go to school and it'll be fine. You still have to be able to work and maintain your family life. And a lot of people choose to go back to nursing versus start out as nurses. So it's hard when you already have your family and your other career already established. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, can you tell, I mean, you, you threw out some different types of nurses out there. Can you kind of explain like the differences between LPN versus RN and CNAs and STNAs? Like, can you talk about the differences? So, honest to goodness, CNA is like a made up term. It's just a different oh. word for like a home health assistant, like a home health aide. They're not state tested would be like a CNA or a home health aide. An STNA is somebody who had to take a state test and take class to accomplish that. Their role is more so in direct patient care as far as um, they do vital signs, blood sugars, that type of thing. Um, assistance with ADL so they would feed people, help them get onto the toilet, help them get dressed and that type of thing. LPNs and RNs, so the only real difference is an RN is more of a managerial role. They're more like a manager. That's kind of how they're trained. They do a lot more with IVs. They can do blood. And in the state of Ohio, LPNs cannot hang blood. And um, they can run a lot of chemo drugs. In the state of Ohio, LPNs cannot run chemo drugs. Okay. So RNs are more necessary in the hospital arena, and LPNs are more necessary and maybe like home care. I mean, there's a place for all nurses in any area mm-hmm. of, Absolutely. of health care. But this is just like typically what I see in that, you know, in that sense, Cincinnati, we have some of the largest health care systems in the country. So I think I got like a pretty good base to kind of look at. We have more nursing homes and more hospital systems than any other area, really. Okay. And I, I didn't know CNA was a made up term. When I was in a, uh... In high school, I was in a CNA program, um, and I and I thought that there was. I never took the um, the certification though to to become a CNA. I just did did it was in a health academy magnet program. I just did the program, um, but I never took the final like took the got, did the certification because I wasn't a part, you know, of the right. curriculum. Um, so so is CNA and STNA like kind of synonymous then? Or are CNA um, and STNA kind of have, An STNA may or may not have more like formal education on, you know, certain things like procedures and washing dentures or how you would properly transfer a person from the bed to the chair, the chair to standing, that type of thing, how to walk someone. Um, a home health aide typically is somebody who has experience in that area because there are areas of nursing like assisted living facilities that do not require you to be state tested. You can go in and work as a caregiver, but there are certain things that you don't do in an assisted living setting, which is non-skilled. 
that you would do in a skill setting like a nursing home, long term care facility. Okay. Thanks for that clarification, because I know a lot of terms are thrown out there. And so, you know, I didn't know if everybody knew, like, the differences between the different types of nursing uh, or nursing assistants. So I appreciate you explaining that for us. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about the importance of the kind of the mind-body connection, or at least start, because... We'll probably be going to break soon, but at least start talking about that. So kind of like with that, I can just kind of speak from experience. When you feel better, when your clothes are clean and you have nice, your hair is done, you feel better about yourself versus if you're sitting there dirty and you're in the dark you feel different about yourself. So that's kind of like a play on the mind, but there are th- they, they are things that matter. It's okay. kind of how you feel about you, I feel kind of impacts the way that your body feels. It's kind of like okay. a mind over matter type of thing sometimes. Got you. And well, it's time for us to take a break and we'll talk more about that in the next segment. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore. You are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And when we come back, we're going to talk some more about the mind-body connection. We'll be right back. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that is 866-451-1451. It is National Nurses Week, and we're talking about the impact of nursing. And I have special guest, Nurse Corinne, who's answering all of our questions and just talking about it. Um, so we we're talking about the, the mind-body connection. Um, and I know that in working with kids, many times people don't look at you know, the kind of the higher Maslow's hierarchy of needs, needs, you know, your basic needs being met. You know, if a kid isn't getting enough sleep or if they're not getting proper nutrition, you know, then that affects their brain, that affects how they think, and it also can affect, you know, them emotionally. Um, And I don't know if those things are really looked at as it relates to how their behaviors are at school. Or in the home, really. Um, and so can you talk some about about the importance of, you know, making sure your basic needs are met and, and how the uh, mm-hmm. taking care of yourself physically can affect you uh, mentally and, and, and vice versa? So I can I feel like... Like you said, we don't consider all of those uh, factors when we're looking at our patients, especially the kids. So it's really hard for you to be able to be prosperous in life when you don't have food in your house, when you don't have lights, when you don't have warm clothes, when you don't have a house to go to. That's very stressful, and it doesn't allow for you to be able to live your life outside of your basic survival. So when we look at the kids, we're kind of like, okay, well, they come from this environment, and that's kind of how um, how sometimes how they have issues. 
And then when we talk about some of the kids, we kind of doing the casework. It's like, okay, well, once they start to trust this foster parent, their behavior will improve. And most of the time that's what happens. Sometimes not, but most of the time things change once that happens. And then mm-hmm. run that second one by me one more time. You right. Know, my memory slips. It's okay. Um, I, I know you had talked earlier. Um, I know it's past your bedtime. It's fine. We had talked. You had talked earlier about when you were working in the long term uh, health facility, and how people who may have you know chronic medical illnesses, how that affects them mentally. You know. Um, there's a lot a lot of times people who may have chronic medical illnesses or even acute you know medical illnesses um may develop things like depression or anxiety you know in in dealing with okay. in dealing with that um so uh, can you talk some about your experience with that since you've worked in different arenas um one thing I can think of, especially as an STNA, and even as even as a nurse, just working the healthcare period, I'll just say that um, we'll have report time times where we just kind of discuss what's going on with each client, and then sometimes people bring up issues to you, and you're like, "Well, I don't have that problem. I just do this," and it's kind of like whatever makes that person feel comfortable enough to trust you and to let you take care of them. It is where people, we just kind of have to use our nursing skills. Just mm-hmm. um, like, okay, Mrs. Jones, does she prefers female caregivers only. She doesn't want a male. Somebody who's going to make her feel comfortable. So I think that that has a big effect on it. Okay. Yes. Another question uh, from a listener. Uh Traditionally, our society thinks of nurses as women. Is the field more open to male professionals at all at all different levels of nursing? Absolutely. We, there aren't a lot of male nurses, but the one thing about the male nurses, most of the time they come in, they just want to work. And I know this may seem a little sexist, but when we have heavier patients, they are very handy for, mm-hmm. you know, to kind of get them moved and do what we need them to do. Um, just like the female <laughs> patients or uh, clients may prefer a female, sometimes the males prefer a male as well, somebody who kind of understands what they're going through. They're a little uh, modest, don't want to be seen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we're totally open to males. We embrace them fully and wholeheartedly and they're just as good a nurse as we are we kind of think of women and mothers as nurturers and fathers can be the same way in caring yeah and I think that's a good point that you make uh, because yeah, yeah women are, are are seen more as nurturers and and males are seen more as the fixers you know and and, and I actually did a um presentation today or and saw another presentation by a male and we talked about this but um you know these whole gender these gender roles you know oh females are the emotional ones and the, like you said they're the nurturers and all of that and but and then it's like well males can't if they if they are too nurturing or if they have you know if they're too emotional then they're acting like a female you know or if a, a female may not be as emotional um then, you know, they're closed off and they're acting like a dude, or, you know, and, and I think these gender roles can kind of mess things up for society because if you are a male and are a nurturer, then you, you're you're scared to to act that way. You know, you might suppress that because you don't want people to talk about you or say that you're not being a real man. Um are there so I, I see that potentially as a barrier, you know, for for uh, males going into the nursing field. Do you see? Are there any other barriers that you can think of that may prevent males from going into the field? I mean, not really for the most part. That's the only thing that I see as well is people just kind of thinking that they're a certain kind of person if they're a nurse. I mean, especially when I tell them older patients, I'm like, oh yeah. 
the nurse, um, and I say he and mention that he's a male, a male nurse, it's like it's almost right. unheard of. But they're, I mean, they're in nursing. They're just not a lot of males in nursing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, and I think when you, uh, on the other, on the flip side, you know, if a female is the doctor, you know, yeah. they're like, they're constantly calling you nurse. So it's, it's hard for them to to grasp that concept, too. We we got a long ways to go. It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And when we come back, we're going to talk some about spirituality. We'll be right back. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses. Mystical. Present. Past. And future. All in one. Wild. Free. Domestic and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This evening, we're talking about the impact of nursing since it is National Nurses Week, and I have special guest, Nurse Corinne. So, in this segment, I would like to open up <laughs> spirituality and what that means to you personally and whether you incorporate it in or how you incorporate it in your work. Okay. So, so you know, I'm going back to my old SCNA days once again. Yes. When I performed care, um, you know, I went to school, they taught me all the right ways to do it. And then when I got into the field, I was like, oh my God, you're breaking the rules. No, that's not how you doing this. Like, there's a balance in between how they teach you to do it and kind of what you have to do on a daily basis to actually be able to perform the tasks that are given to you for the day. So my thing is I always perform care and treat people as if their mother or their father is in the room. Like, cause you don't, typically caregivers aren't nasty to patients when their family's there. And most importantly, as if when I was younger, you know, when I first started, it was as if God is watching me take care of what he perceived to be as a child. You know, I need to be mindful of the way that I'm treating these people. And that just always keep me on the straight and narrow just to be kind of ethical and just do what's best for the patient. Mm. Okay. Okay. I like that. And how do you find balance then um 
you know, I know for like I, everybody knows I like to meditate and all that kind of stuff. So how do you find balance? Cause I know you talked about earlier with, you know, you, um, going to work and, and here, you know, doing all of that and then having to come home and, you know, you have a, a son and so being a mother and all of that, like, how do you find your balance? So that has always been a struggle for me because before I had my son, I was worker, worker, worker. And I, when I had him, I was, but, um, growing up, I had a single mother and my mother worked a lot. So something that I kind of wanted to do, we couldn't do because she was kind of busy with work. So I take that experience and I, I want to do different with my child. So you kind of have to just decide what's important and what's necessary and create those boundaries for what you're going to do. I'm not going to be going to work or still at work at 9 p.m. That's not something that's feasible for my household because it's not because my son is the most important thing to me. So I have to make mm-hmm. sure that all his needs are met. I have to make sure he has time, help with homework, a bath. If he just want me to be there, if he just want to lay on me, I just have to make sure that I'm available for that. And I don't want to look back and he bring up something and be like, oh, no, mama, you was at work. I just I think it's really about boundaries. And I'm learning to create those boundaries, you know, as, as I get further along in my career. This is true, because if you try and call Corinne at certain times, <laughs> you will not get an answer because she is I mean she's serious about that you know being with the family and doing the family stuff so and I, and I can't be mad at it you know I can't be mad at it at all I'm like oh okay I know this is around this time so she not gonna answer the phone but you know so it, it is it is very important I have a uh, inspirational meditation positive message and it's from Jim Rohn, and it says, either you run the day or the day runs you. I'm going to say that again. Mm-hmm. Either you run the day or the day runs you. We can't control how the day goes, but we can control how we allow it to affect us. We can control mm-hmm. how... Um, we respond to it and react to it, um, which is why it's important. And, you know, I keep throwing out this word balance, but I, I went to a, um, a women's conference and someone made a very, a very good point um, that kind of stuck with me. You know, we're always talking about balance, 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 but I think balance is probably not the best word because when you think about balance, that means that everything has to be given equal time, right? That's what that's what, when you when you think about balance. But sometimes there may be certain aspects of your life that require more time, you know, at any given moment than others. So there's not going to be a quote unquote balance because this is requiring more of your time in that moment. Right. So um, instead of saying balance, say, you know, harmony, you know, things mm-hmm. need to be, you know, your, your your life needs to be in harmony as opposed to balance. And, and that really stuck with me because we do, you know, this is all about, oh, mind, body, balance, and, you know, find work-life balance. It's all that balance, 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 but everything is not always going to be given the same, need to be given the same amount of time. You know, and I'm also a firm believer of how you start your day will affect how you allow the day to affect you. I used to be really um, anxious going into work because, you know, in this field, you never know what you're going to walk into. And. I would go into work really anxious, but I found that as I started meditating or doing positive affirmations or praying or whatever it is, um, if I'm, if I do something to relax me and throughout the day, it's like, it's not just how you start the day, 
you know, you may have to take a little break. I've had to go like, let me go take a little walk around if I had a time or he's even going to the bathroom, like something to just give me, let me just have a time to woosah and break before I break or break somebody. And so I, um, cause the thoughts run through my mind. It's okay. I'm human. You know, I can, I can, I can admit that. Uh, quite another question from a caller. Uh, I mean, excuse me, listener. What is the main quality? And you can answer this actually in the next segment. The question is, what is a main quality to look for in a good nurse? So be thinking about that during the break. It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the VBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to answer that question and wrap up. Stay tuned. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Hey, guys, this is Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio this evening, we are celebrating National Nurses Week, and I've had the pleasure of having special guest, Nurse Corinne. And I just wanted to uh, reiterate the question that we uh, had from the listener um, in the last segment. What is a main quality to look for in a good nurse? Um, so there are a couple main qualities. Um, I feel like you have to be amicable. Just be friendly with the patient. Hi, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day, that type of thing. Um, <clears throat> be willing to listen. Uh, a lot of times we think we know what's going on with the person, and by listening we actually gain the knowledge and insight to better diagnose and treat patients, whatever their illness may be, whether it be mental or physical. Um you need to be knowledgeable. You can't just go out here, you know, telling people people have blood pressure, pour that salt on that chicken. You can't do that. You got to know yes, what yeah. you're talking about. And mm-hmm. if you don't know, you got to know where to find the answer or be willing to find the answer, as well as um, you need to stand by your word. If you tell a patient that brings a concern up to you that you're going to handle it, you need to. Or if you don't have the opportunity or expertise to handle it, you need to get it to the right person so that that person doesn't fall through the cracks because that's very vital and important. And that's what makes a lot of people not trust people in healthcare because they're like, oh, well, I told that other nurse, so I didn't think it mattered because she never did anything. Uh, yeah, you got you got to, like you said, you got to stand by your word, right? Be authentic, be genuine, 
Yeah. You know, um, I think for me personally, I think a good quality of a nurse is to be present, not only mm-hmm. present physically, but also socially, you know, emotionally, mentally. You know, a lot of times you can tell when somebody is kind of not there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that is something because of the hustle and bustle, you know, oh, I got it. I got to, you know, get, see this next patient or you thinking about the next patient or like your grocery list or what things are going on at home. It's not easy. You know, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important for you to have that self-awareness too. Then if you know that you kind of are kind of out of it, you know, prime example, I, um, so I recently learned about, well, like I said at the beginning of the show, the uh, the uh, passing of um, the tragic passing of a nurse that I used to work with, and so I found out about it Monday morning, and it like I was really messed up, you know. I was late to to my clinic because I kept having to like go back because I would forget something. I kept having to go back home to get something, and and it just it just kind of kind of knocked me out. Um, I, you know, I got to the clinic and I was able to get through the day. But you know, I, I did I did have that on my mind, and luckily I have, you know, good people there to help me. So you, you really got to know know your personnel and 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 know have that self awareness. But it, it's the show has come to an end. Thank you so much, Corinne, for uh, being on the show this evening. I think. Um, I've gained a lot from you being here. Happy Nurses Week to people. Happy Teachers Week. I hope everybody has a happy Mother's Day. If you're a mother, uh, thank you so much for entering this journey of the mind, body, and spirit with me. I hope everybody has a great week, and please remember to stay connected. Take care. You've been listening to Interconnected with Dr. Raina Gilmore. Join the conversation each week as Dr. Raina explores the mind, body, soul, and spirit connection. Take a journey that will lead you to a path of healing, learning, and how to cultivate and manage your life. Here on Dr. Raina's Interconnected. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.